Good morning. It certainly is good to be here today on this the Lord's Day. Today is a day on which we honor our mothers, and I think that is wonderful. But this is also the Lord's Day, and we worship Him in spirit and in truth. The Bible is something like a good friend. And as we grow more and more familiar with the Bible, it just grows sweeter and sweeter with time. How many of us have memorized some of the most familiar texts of the Bible? Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord's Prayer, as it's recorded in the book of Matthew, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Psalm 119. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Those texts, like the stories shared with a good friend, just grow sweeter with time. And I certainly think that the same can be said for the text that we're considering this morning in Proverbs chapter 31, beginning in verse 10. An excellent wife who can find her worth is far above jewels. The text of Proverbs chapter 31, verses 10 through 31, represents in Hebrew an acrostic poem. Each verse represents a subsequent letter in the Hebrew alphabet. There are 22 uh, letters in the Hebrew alphabet, and so there are 22 verses in this poem. And what is represented there is the ideal woman. She is perfect in every way. And that can be a little bit overwhelming when we read the entirety of the poem because it's not quite possible for any one person to achieve all of the things that are mentioned in these 22 verses, but that is not the point. The wise man is painting a picture of an ideal woman, and each verse is kind of like, as one preacher described it, a pearl. The wise man is stringing pearls, and each verse represents beauty and quality, and it can stand alone, or it can stand with the rest as they complement one another. And so as we think about a woman worthy of praise this morning from this acrostic poem, I'd like to note the end of that poem beginning in verse 25. What we find here in this description can apply to any woman, whether she is married or not, whether she is a mother or not. We find the description of a woman worthy of praise. And first of all, she is strong. She is strong. Proverbs 31 and verse 25. Strength and dignity are her clothing, and she laughs at the time to come. She is strong, first of all, because she has the right foundation. She is strong because she has the right foundation. Like the wise man in Psalm 1 who is compared to a tree, planted by the waters whose roots grow deep. She is strong because she has the right foundation. Like the wise man in Jesus' parable in Matthew chapter 7 who builds his house upon the rock, she is strong because she has the right foundation and that foundation is the Lord her God. And because she is rooted and grounded in God, she is prepared for everything that comes. Whatever challenges she may face, she can face them with poise because of the foundation that she has in her God. And that applies to the things that she deals with on a day-to-day -day basis, as well as the things that are to come. The wise man says, she laughs. She laughs at the time to come. In other words, she is not concerned about the future because she knows who holds the future in his hand and she trusts 
in him. How many of us have known strong women? The Bible describes the female as the weaker sex. And the meaning of that is not that she is not strong, but simply that the man has a, a physically stronger build. But the woman who trusts in the Lord, the woman whose life is founded upon her relationship with the Lord, is strong today and in her looking ahead to the future. She is also one who respects herself. She respects herself. The wise man says that strength and dignity are her clothing. Now the interesting thing about this word dignity in the original text is that it is used in a number of different settings in the Old Testament. When it refers to an older man in the Old Testament, it is the word that is used to describe the fact that he has gray hair. When this same word is used to describe a bride in the Old Testament, it is referring to her bridal adornments or garments. The veil, whatever jewelry or, or clothing that she may wear. And so when the wise man says that strength and dignity are her clothing, he is saying that she wears, literally and figuratively, what is appropriate at all times. Now this makes her strong. Because she carries herself well and she respects herself enough that she demands respect by the way that she lives her life and carries herself. And so we might compare what Paul has to say in 1 Timothy chapter 2. In 1 Timothy chapter 2 beginning in verse 9. In this text Paul is addressing a problem perhaps in the church at Ephesus and the way that some of the women are carrying themselves. But there is a principle here that especially applies. He states, Likewise also, that women should adorn themselves in respectable apparel, with modesty and self-control, not with braided hair and gold or pearls or costly attire, but with what is proper for women who profess godliness with good works. The woman who is worthy of praise is strong, she is strong, first of all, because she has the right foundation. Her foundation is her relationship with her God, who teaches her wisdom. And she is strong because she respects herself. She carries herself with integrity, with dignity, so that even when she is challenged, even when someone tries to shame her or take her honor, her reputation stands and she is strong. And so she is worthy of praise. The woman who is worthy of praise not only is strong, but she is a teacher. Now, being married to a teacher, I may have a little bit of bias in making this statement. But it comes directly from the text of Proverbs 31. Verse 26, the wise man states, She opens her mouth with wisdom and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. She opens her mouth with wisdom. In other words, she speaks wisely. She speaks wisely. How many of us have profited from the wise words of the mothers in our lives? Maybe it was not our physical mother or maybe it was, but I know that all of us have profited from the wise words fitly spoken by the women in our lives. Perhaps it was the statement that she made as you were leaving the house. Something like, remember who you are and whose you are. Or perhaps it was that very fitting statement that she made when you were in a quarrel with someone else and she reminded you, that you are to treat others the way that you would like to be treated. We have all profited from the wise instruction, the wise words spoken at the right moment by the godly women in our lives. And I'm reminded of another text in the book of Proverbs, chapter 15, beginning in verse 1, where the wise man reminds us what wise words look like. 
Proverbs 15, beginning in verse 1. A soft answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. The tongue of the wise commends knowledge, but the mouths of fools pour out folly. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, keeping watch on the evil and the good. A gentle tongue is a tree of life, but perver perverseness in it breaks the spirit. She is a teacher because she speaks wise words. She is also a teacher because she speaks with kindness. The text of verse 26 says, The teaching of kindness is on her tongue. Now when we read that, we probably think about being polite, speaking gentle words. And certainly that fits with what is being stated here, but it goes beyond that. The word that is used here for kindness in verse 26 is the same word that is used in the Old Testament to describe the love of God. We're probably familiar with Lamentations 3 and verse 22 that says, The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. The steadfast love. This is the word that is used to refer to God's love and faithfulness to his covenant people in the Old Testament. That is the word that is used here when it says that she teaches with kindness. And so the idea here is that she teaches us what it looks like to give and receive faithful love. And how many of us have not known women who have taught not only by their words but also by their actions what it is to give and receive faithful love. A woman who is a teacher, a wise teacher, a teacher of the faithful love that we know first of all from God is a woman who is certainly worthy of praise. She is a teacher. She is strong and she takes care of others. Notice what the wise man continues to say and as was read for us by our brother Alan. She looks well to the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. A woman worthy of praise takes care of others. She first of all provides for her family. Now certainly as we read the entirety of this poem, we find the ideal woman provides for her family within her household and also by working outside of the home. And so it is not biblical to say that a woman cannot work outside of the home and still fulfill her role as the caretaker of the home. My own mother did not work outside of the home for the entirety of my childhood and yet she worked harder than any woman I've ever known. She certainly took care of us in every way. But my mother-in-law, for as long as I have known, and, and even before that, has worked outside of the home, and yet I have not known a home like hers that was so well cared for. And so, the woman who is worthy of praise takes care of others by, first of all, providing for her family. She has responsibilities at home, and she does not overlook those responsibilities. And in those responsibilities, she knows each of the individuals within her home and their individual needs, so that her children are able to rise up and call her blessed and her husband likewise. We don't all have the same needs, but the woman worthy of praise is able to see that those needs are different and to cater to each one within their needs. She provides for her home, but she also takes care of those who are in need outside of her home. If we back up in the poem to verse 20, this is what we find. She opens her hand to the poor and reaches out her hands to the needy. She sees the needs of those who are outside of her home. How many of us have known a compassionate woman who had a keen sense of those around her who were in need? This is where I have to brag on my wife, Jessica. She works in the school system here and she sees quite a bit, quite a number of children who don't have even the basic necessities of life. 
And so it is common for her to come home and say, let's find some money in our budget. We've got to help this child out. They are in need. A woman who is worthy of praise looks to the needs of others. She provides for her family. She takes care of those who are in need outside of her home as well, within her ability. And last but not least, the woman who is worthy of praise fears the Lord. The text goes on to say, Many women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. <coughs> Excuse me. Charm is deceitful, and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands, and let her works praise her in the gates. The woman who is worthy of praise fears the Lord. Now, what does it mean for her to fear the Lord? Well, first of all, she fears His great might. She fears His great might. In Exodus chapter 20, Moses receives the Ten Commandments on the mountain. And when he comes down off of the mountain, it, the experience of the people is described to us, beginning in verse 18. Now when all the people saw the thunder and the flashes of lightning and the sound of the trumpet and the mountain smoking, the people were afraid and trembled, and they stood far off and said to Moses, You speak to us, and we will listen. But do not let us, but do not let God speak to us, lest we die. The people were afraid of God. They were afraid of His great power and might. And from that standpoint, we should be as well. Because it is this very same fear that draws us closer to God. Notice what is said in the next verse. Moses said to the people, Do not fear, for God has come to test you, that the fear of Him may be before you, that you may not sin. Now that seems almost contradictory. Moses says, Do not fear, and yet let the fear keep you from sin. And so, it is fear of the Lord that causes us to recognize that sin leads only to God's wrath. And that very same fear allows us to be brought closer to God because that fear leads us to Jesus Christ who died for our sins, whose blood is able to wash away our sins. And when that fear brings us closer to God, it makes us people who are worthy of praise. And so the woman who fears the Lord is worthy of praise because that fear has brought her into a right relationship with her God. In fact, it is this fear that is the cause of everything worth praise in her life. It is this fear that allows her to be strong because it has brought her into right relationship with God. It is this fear that has allowed her to know the wisdom that comes from God in His Word so that she is a teacher. It is this fear that allows her to care for others because she has been taught the care that God has for us. And so a woman who is worthy of praise is a woman who fears the Lord. We've all known women in our lives, we could even call them mothers, who truly are women worthy of praise. And the ways that we have mentioned this morning and many others you don't have to have children to be a woman worthy of praise. And of course, these very same things can apply to the men in the audience as well. 
But today is a day on which we praise the women in our lives who have set an example of godliness and faithfulness. So I want to read this poem. The first stanza of the poem is from uh, an, an old book that was used in American schools called McGuffey's Second Reader. And I have added another verse to it. Beautiful faces are they that wear the light of a pleasant spirit there. Beautiful hands are they that do deeds that are noble, good, and true. Beautiful feet are they that go swiftly to lighten another's woe. Beautiful mothers are they that share thoughtful lessons of love and care. Beautiful women are they who teach in kindness and purity too. Beautiful people are they that show others the path of righteousness's glow. Thank God for our mothers. Thank God for those individuals in our lives who have shown us what it is to serve Him faithfully through every possible trial. Perhaps this morning you recognize that there is some sin that stands between you and your God. Because He loved us so much, He gave His Son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for our sins as a free gift to all people who are willing to receive it. And so if you need to come before the Lord and become a child of God, you may come believing that Jesus is the Christ. Turn from your life of sin, confess His name, and be buried in the waters of baptism, having your sins washed away. You rise up a new creature a new person who is able to call God Father and walk in His presence daily. Or if you're already a Christian and you also need to respond because of some sin that is in your life or simply because you need the encouragement of those who are here, you are invited to come as we stand and sing together.